Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and drop a little change in the cash app. Boom, Adrian Broner. Listen, we know Adrian Broner returns to the ring this weekend. But forget that. I think Adrian Broner is going to pass the test with flying colors, okay? I'm looking at Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is looking slim and trim. And I know for a fact he's taking the fight seriously. A little bit of concerns getting to this point, right? But that being said, as far as Adrian Broner and the comeback and saying that he believes he can take over the division at 140 pounds, let me tell you something. There's a lot of young guns in that division, a lot of killers. But we need to understand Adrian Broner's never lost at 130, never lost at 135. He never lost at, lost at 140. Now, this Adrian Broner isn't the Adrian Broner from 10 years ago either. Okay, so let's make sure we put it, we frame this argument the correct way. But understand this, Adrian Broner, it's a couple years ago, was talking about coming back to boxing and taking over the 135-pound division. Now, some may say, damn, he's not talking 140. He was talking 135 before. Why, is he, why would he even talk about 135 and why are you, why are you talking about it? Because Adrian Broner wants to be champion. And I'm telling you right now, there's nothing wrong with Adrian Broner if he decides to cut down and make 135, if he can do it, to fight a guy like Devin Haney or, or, or even fighting somebody at 140. But 135, if, if he can get down to 135 and make a fight with Devin Haney, let me tell y'all, that is a huge fight. And in addition to that, depending on how he looks this weekend, we're going to have an idea on just what's left in Adrian Broner. Because in my opinion, even with his inactivity, right, Adrian Broner should blow the attorney out the water. You can't take out someone who boxes part-time and get in the ring now, Adrian Broner, and allow this to go to distance or allow this guy to give you a tough fight. Adrian Broner should blast him out of there. Now, if he does... This whole thing about 140, look, you may start talking about maybe looking at 135, okay? And for him to fight Devin Haney, for those of you who are saying, now there's no way in the world Devin Haney and Adrian Broner fight at 135. If Broner can make 135, you're telling me Don King can't make that fight happen? You're telling me Don King still doesn't have what it takes and those connections to make a fight between Broner and Haney happen? Now, we know they got the history there between Broner and Haney. It's not as toxic as, like, Haney and Tank, but there's some toxicity there because Broner is the one that brought that whole thing about Tank Davis and Devin Haney. He brought that to light. He's the one who came and he footstopped that how Tank Davis had the gloves been a little he heavier, Devin, uh, Devin Haney would have been knocked out cold and hurt badly. He said Devin was already out cold on his feet. With Tank hit him with the 16 ounce gloves. So, Devin Haney's dad, you know, he's kind of tried to expose uh, Adrian Broner, showing text messages, and to me, acting his shoe size, which is we've come to expect from uh, Bill Haney, Bill Beijing Haney, right? It is what it is. But I think that if you want to come back into, the, into boxing with a splash, Adrian Broner, in my opinion, especially with Don King behind him, the Don King muscle would leapfrog everybody and get his crack at Devin Haney. Now, we understand what Bob Arum's trying to do with the three opponents he's offering Haney. We understand Eddie Hearn and what he's trying to offer Haney. But don't, I'm telling y'all right now, if Adrian Broner, the only reason this man is making 135, way he didn't really outgrow it. He lacked discipline, okay? So it is what it is. But if he can get down, we'll have to see. But I'm going to tell you right now, he hasn't made 135 since February 2013. Right? That's when he went and demolished a guy named Gavin Reese and when he defended his WBC uh, title. But I think we need to stop for a second and, and really understand what we have with Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is either going to go up or he's going to go down. Right? I don't expect to see much lateral accomplishments from Broner. He's either going up. And what I mean by that is the next opponent is going to be a little bit better because I think he still needs more than just this one get back fight before he jumps into a fight with Regis Progray. You understand? Or a fight with Sobriel Matias. I just I just don't think that's smart. 
But we got to see after this fight, he's got, he's, okay, he's here now. What does he do between this fight, when he gets that nice piece of money from Don King, and then in between the next fight? Does he go crazy again? Because we know he has issues with discipline and being responsible, struggles with communication, right? And attitude isn't the best at times. So he doesn't play his cards right. But if he can show discipline from this win, go through it, stay in the gym, get to another training camp, they announce another fight, and he shows up, does a press conference, makes weight at 140, we may be on to something. When's the last time you've seen Adrian Broner staying out the headlines for anything other than negative reasons? When's the last time we've seen Adrian Broner be on point when it comes to making weight? When's the last time we've seen Adrian Broner get a big win and not go out here and be financially irresponsible and start indulging in alcohol and chasing these prostitutes. That's what he's doing, okay? Um, it was the last time you seen him really maintain his weight in between fights. It's been a while because Brown has been bouncing since between 140 and 147 uh, for several years now. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you look at him in uh, 2017 when he lost to Mikey Garcia, I'm going to tell you right now, he should have never lost that fight. Adrian Broner, the Madonna fight, I'm going to be real with you guys. Adrian Broner lost that fight. But my understanding is Madonna was on the cocktails. Okay? So let's just understand that. My understanding there was some Ariza cocktails floating around. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I know the glove he had was a puncher's glove as well. So if Madonna had a little bit of the cocktail in him and he had the puncher's glove, it's going to be a tough one for Adrian Broner, who learned very quickly that uh, Madonna was there to win. So when you get beyond that and you look at the Mikey Garcia loss, that close fight with Jesse Vargas, um, you look at even his loss to Pacquiao. Uh, Madonna set the stage for everybody else to get wins over Broner. Broner should have never lost any of those guys. He's leaps and bounds better than him, talented, more talented, more athletic. But like I say, the best fighter doesn't win the fight. It's the fighter, who, the boxer who fights the best on that night. And that's what he did. And for him to get back to pay-per-view and everything else, it's going to take some work, man. It's going to take some work. But I think he's in a good position. At 135, right, if he can make it. Who beats Brona at 135? Let's be real. You can talk about Shakira Stevenson. Him beating Broner, most people say yes right now. But if Broner can show that there's something left, the commitment level's there. At 135, hey, he may get the fourth one deal, and Devin Haney may go on and think that he can clip him, and Broner beats him. Okay? Because we know Broner has a chin. Broner has, Broner has an amazing defense. But the thing is, he's got to catch up to Devin Haney. And that could be the biggest problem for the problem in a fight with Devin Haney. Now, at 140, when you think about Adrian Broner and who's there and who who can actually beat uh, beat beat Adrian Broner, again, he's never lost at 140. But you got these guys floating around there that could, would make it interesting. Regis Progray, fast and powerful. Could be a tough fight. Uh, Subra Matias, hey, he's left-handed, fights orthodox, just had to watch out for that big left hook and that jab because the right hand is, isn't really doing that much damage. But that left hand is a problem. I was paying attention to his last fight. I was like, damn. Whenever this guy, Matias, the Puerto Rican, hits this guy with his left hand, the guy just gets tranquilized and falls all over the place because he's left-handed, just like Caleb Plant. But outside of those guys fighting Ryan Garcia, De, De La Hoya is offering a fight to Adrian Broner to fight Ryan Garcia. He just wants to see how Broner does uh, this weekend. If Broner wins with flying colors, he's looking to make Ryan Garcia and Devin Hank and uh, Ryan Garcia and a uh, Broner, but he's looking. they're looking to make Ryan Garcia, and this is the thing about De La Hoya. Ryan Garcia wants to fight Roley Romero. De La Hoya has other plans. If you look at what De La Hoya is doing, talking about putting Ryan Garcia in there with Pacquiao, you know why he's talking about that, right? I'm going to tell you why, but let me say this. Ryan Garcia is not talking about Pacquiao. There's a reason. Ryan wants to fight Roley. Ryan's not talking about fighting Adrian Broner. Oscar De La Hoya is. So why is Oscar De La Hoya pushing Manny Pacquiao's name out and Broner's name out in hopes that those fights take place for Ryan Garcia? 
Which fight generates the most money? Rolly Romero and Ryan? Or Pacquiao versus Ryan? Or Broner versus Ryan? Of course, Pacquiao or Broner versus Ryan. De La Hoya looking to cash another big check. Remember what this man said a little bit over a year ago. He tried to sell Golden Boy Promotions. And he has an opportunity to make more dough. He, he, he can't, De La Hoya can't control himself, the amount of money he made off of that fight with uh, Garcia and Tank. Now, I'm not saying he made gazillions. Tank and those guys made, did good, but Golden Boy Promotions made more money than what they were accustomed to off of pay-per-view events in recent years because they lost Canelo. Once they lost Canelo, yo, man, the dog and pony show bounced, gone. The armored truck went on over there to match room. So let's just understand that. But you could see Broner come back and get back to the top of 140 or 135 real quick. Imagine if Broner and Rolly Romero fought after this fight and he beat Rolly Romero. Broner's a champion at 140, just like that. Just like that. And I'm going to tell you, I think Broner beats Rolly Romero. I'm just going to be honest with you. If he's not letting his hands go, that could be a boring-ass fight because, you know, Rolly's going to be worried about getting countered and Broner's going to be worried about getting hit. So then you have no activity. And we'll probably be at home throwing cans of tomato paste at the damn TV and out of frustration. But nonetheless, I just have to say Broner beats him. And then Broner's in the running at 140. And then he, who knows who he goes on to fight next. Maybe if Tiafimo wins, which I doubt it, he fights Tiafimo, he beats Tiafimo. Now Broner's unified at 140. So you see what I'm saying? This could go a direction. And if it's not working out, he bubbled out, he draws down to 135. Maybe he gets the four for one deal with, with Haney. We just gotta be, have an open uh, dialogue here about it uh, because the $10 million offers, Adrian Broner, he's just not getting those anymore, okay? But it's not, not saying he can't get that for his next fight or the following fight, especially with Don King uh, pushing him. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to be, be, be clear. He can become champion under Don King. And Broner, of course, has huge expectations with his new deal. And I think he has every right to have those expectations. And he has every right to feel that, you know what, looking at the landscape between 135 and 140, if he has the discipline to get his weight down there, look, he can do it. He can do it. And we're going to see just how he does this Friday uh, underneath uh, Don King. And I'm excited to see it. But as far as the attorney he's fighting this weekend, look, man, it, it, it's hard to, to, to understand to even give this guy a chance, you know, the, the attorney has his hands full. This time it's not full of paperwork, full of Adrian Broner, and Adrian Broner brings to the ring. So make no mistake, in the ring, I think the attorney is going to do everything that he can to try to take Broner's head off his shoulders. I just don't think McDonald was able to do it or anyone else who's elite was able to do it. I just don't think this attorney is going to do it. And if he's able to do it, that means Adrian Broner, there's just nothing left. He's hit rock bottom, and I'm not even sure Don King can help him climb out of that. That being said, I'm actually feeling a little bit different about, about AB. Before I was saying, you know, look, he's still having issues, problems, long handle, you know, long handle spooning him. He's toxic. Leave him on his own. He'll suck out your eyeball. He doesn't care. But he's actually shown a commitment to trying to be great by making weight and about to get in the ring this Friday. So, you know, still long handle spoon, maybe shorten it up a bit. And if he continues to do great and be disciplined, hey, we'll bring him back into the circle. Still a lot to be seen with him. Verdict still out on Broner. But I think Broner is in a good position to pick up some hardware and get a huge win at 140. And if Broner and his team want to make that fight, he may get the 4 for 1 deal if he can melt down to 135. But that is torture. On his body. We'll see what happens. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans. All seven continents. Adrian Broner to 135 and 140. Sky's the limit. Can he do it? Leave your uh, comments down below, all right? I'm in the breeze.